Welcome to the Chemistry, Biology and Math Revision Hub. Today we're doing the IGCSE Biology Topics. This is Chemical Coordination. In Chemical Coordination, we're more interested in looking at hormones. So we'll begin by talking about glands and then those are going to be broken down into exocrine as well as endocrine glands. So glands are organs that release or secret substances. The cells within these glands release chemicals through the membrane and some of these substances can travel somewhere else where they have their specific functions or where they perform their specific functions. Some glands are going to be exocrine and the others are going to be endocrine. So the exocrine glands usually have ducts. Whatever they secret is going to go through the tubes called ducts. Examples are the salivary glands found in the mouth which produce saliva as well as the tear glands in the eyes that secret tears because they do have tear ducts. The pancreas is also an exocrine gland because it has a pancreatic duct through which some digestive enzymes pass through. The endocrine glands usually produce hormones and these have no ducts or we call them ductless glands. They secrete hormones into the blood. These hormones are going to be transported through the blood to the different areas of the body where they cause specific effects. So looking at the two, we can see the exocrine glands we have the gland and this is going to be the duct so we see where the secretion is going to occur and these are going to be released through the duct to the different areas of the body. These are the cells that secrete those specific chemicals or those specific compounds. And on this side we see the hormones are going to be secreted from certain cells and these cells are going to be connected on nearby blood vessels so whatever they secrete is going to be released into the blood vessels and be transported throughout the body until those hormones reach specific target organs and then cause their effect. Some questions can come about comparing the nervous system as well as the endocrine system. The nervous system, remember, transports information through nerve impulses, but this one here transports information using chemical signals. The nervous system has some synapses where neurotransmitters, which are chemicals, are going to have their effect. The endocrine system on the other side works only with hormones and these are going to be transported in the bloodstream. Impulses in the nervous system are going to be transported usually fast and they do have instant effect. While hormones are going to travel more slowly and generally they take longer to act. The nervous system have responses that are usually short-lived but hormones do have long-lasting effects. The impulses act on individual cells. This is for the nervous system like muscles and so on, so this is going to be a localized effect. However, hormones have a wider spread effect. When adrenaline is produced, it can cause effects on multiple organs around the body, so it has a wider spread effect. Looking at some examples of endocrine glands, here we have the pituitary gland, we have the thyroid gland, there is the thymus gland, there is the pancreas. Like I said already, the pancreas is exocrine, but it also is an endocrine gland because it produces insulin and glucagon. Then we have the adrenal glands. The testes as well as ovaries are also glands. So beginning with the pituitary gland, this produces three major hormones that are going to be talked about in IGCSE. First is the follicle stimulating hormone, and this causes egg development in females, as well as estrogen production and sperm production in males. The other hormone is luteinizing hormone or sometimes called LH. In females, this is going to cause ovulation or egg release and it causes testosterone production in males. So these two are involved in either estrogen as well as testosterone, which are connected with secondary sex characteristics. The other is ADH hormone, which is involved in controlling the blood water content by causing the kidney tubules to be more permeable to water for more reabsorption to occur in order to produce concentrated urine. The other gland is the thyroid gland we saw here. This produces the hormone called thyroxine and this controls the metabolic rate of the body by speeding up chemical reactions within the cells. Then we have the adrenal glands. These produce adrenaline. This prepares the body for physical activity. And the other is the pancreas. Like I've already said, this is both endocrine and exocrine. We talked about the production of pancreatic enzymes, where it acts as an exocrine. And here, production of insulin as well as glucagon, where it acts as endocrine. 
Insulin hormone lowers the blood glucose levels while glucagon raises the blood glucose level. Insulin causes the liver to take up more glucose in order to convert it to glycogen and also has the same effect on the muscles. The testes, these are glands that produce testosterone and this controls secondary sex characteristics in males. The ovaries produce estrogen as well as progesterone. Estrogen controls the development of secondary sex characteristics in females and then progesterone regulates the menstrual cycle in females. Moving on to the fight or flight response caused by adrenaline. When somebody is frightened, excited, angry or so on, adrenal glands release adrenaline and this adrenaline can work on various target organs to prepare the body for action, which is going to be either fight or run away. So when the body is preparing for action, there is going to be an increase in the breathing rate, which increases the amount of oxygen that is taken up. Then the heartbeat is going to increase so that more blood can be pumped with nutrients and oxygen for faster respiration. Then blood is going to be diverted away from the intestines towards the muscles. This ensures that the muscles have more oxygen for aerobic respiration in order to contract so that the body can be prepared for activity. Adrenaline is going to cause the liver to break down glycogen into glucose. This provides glucose that can be used for respiration. Also, muscles are going to absorb more glucose in order to use it to respire. Usually for animals, the pupils are going to dilate to increase visual sensitivity to movement, and then the body hairs are going to stand to make them bigger to the enemy, and mental awareness is going to increase so that they do react faster. Looking at glucagon, insulin, and diabetes, when blood glucose levels rise, the pancreas is going to release insulin hormone, and this is going to stimulate the liver as well as muscle cells to take up more glucose when they do, they will convert this glucose to glycogen. Remember, glycogen is not going to be soluble because it's a polymer and it can be folded into smaller spaces. So it's going to fit or it's going to be compacted into smaller spaces and it will not affect the osmotic potential of the cell because it's not soluble. When blood glucose is low, the pancreas is going to secrete glucagon hormone and this glucagon hormone is going to stimulate the liver to convert glycogen back to glucose so that the glucose can be used. We can see this is negative feedback systems involving insulin as well as glucagon. So if glucose goes higher, this is going to secrete insulin and insulin causes the liver to convert glucose to glycogen and then that is going to be stored in the cells in order to return the glucose level to normal. Then on the other hand, when the blood glucose drops and then the pancreas is going to secrete glucagon hormone, this is going to cause the liver to convert glycogen to glucose and it's going to return the blood glucose level to normal. So negative feedback occurs either way. Now, diabetes is a condition where the pancreas cannot secrete enough insulin to keep the blood glucose constant, and therefore the blood glucose is going to be raised. So usually the patients have to get insulin shots because their bodies cannot produce enough insulin to cause the conversion of glucose into glycogen. So people who are diabetic have unstable glucose levels and constant thirst, the thirst receptors in the hypothalamus are going to be stimulated and the people are going to feel thirsty, so they drink a lot of water in order to dilute their blood. Severe diabetes can lead the sufferers to a coma or sometimes they even die. Diabetes is broken down into type 1 and type 2. In type 2 diabetes, the pancreas produces insulin, but the body shows resistance. This is common in overweight people, but type 1 diabetes is usually genetic because the pancreas cannot produce sufficient insulin or sometimes it cannot produce insulin at all. Moving on to measuring glucose level, of course, people who are diabetic are going to use this special glucose sensor. They will prick their finger and place a drop of blood onto the test strip. And then the strip is going to be placed into the sensor like we see here. And the sensor is going to give an accurate reading. This enables them to tell when to inject themselves with insulin. So this brings us to the end of this topic. Thank you for being with us. Do not forget to subscribe. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.